So I'm not sure if anybody in the world is as excited as we are about this calendar upgrade. It's been a long time coming uh, and we're super pumped to see this new version of Google Calendar. The old version was steadfast and, and trustworthy, but uh, this new version is something that we've been waiting for. When they updated the mobile app, uh, we were expecting one in the web version and it finally came. And uh, I wanna take a few minutes to run through it. So if your admin has turned on the new calendar, uh, if they've turned on to set it as uh, you have the option of going back and forth, which most people probably do. You now have a blue button right up here, use new calendar. Click on that, it says fresh look for the calendar, you can upgrade. So what it's gonna do, excitingly enough, is bring up the brand new Google Calendar. And you can tell right off the bat, it's already cleaner uh, than the old version was. A little bit easier to read. Uh, but for the most part, glancing at it, the things are in the same place as they were before. You still have the today button up here. You do have still the small monthly calendar uh, and then all of your calendars here and then other calendars down below. And again, it looks relatively similar. The only uh, noticeable difference right off the bat, add the coworkers calendar and the plus button, uh, the, that adding the coworkers has been moved up and the plus button is new. So here is sort of your getting started point uh, to add new calendars. Uh, to browse through resources, browse calendars of interest, which is a fun thing if you've never browsed calendars of interest. This is an option for you, and you could do it in the old calendar too, but if you wanna add like actual official calendars to sports uh, or things like that, so if I wanna add um, the San Luis Blues calendar on here, I can just simply click the box and that calendar is added. So if I go back, now St. Louis Blues is down right there, or I guess it will show up at some point in my other calendars. Now, uh, what we are looking at here is a very similar uh, calendar to what we had before. And again, the monthly view, not my favorite way to view things, uh, but here in the small calendar, if you click and drag, you can select the number of days you want to view. Um, you can also change that up here by the same way we could before. But now you can create your own small, uh, your own personal version, which we'll do here in just a second. Two ways to create events, just by kind of looking at it here, you can double click in the white space and it brings up a new event. Uh, here you can add the title, you can again, so we call this test event. Uh, again, tell it to be all day, give it times. Um, it again defaults to whatever length of time you set as the default, which we'll look at in a minute. You do have locations. Uh, which are pretty handy. You also have, again, notifications the way you did before, busy, default, visibility, those types of things. Um, now, again, you can set it to repeat. This is relatively the same, adding guests. Again, you can add guests simply by typing an email in emails and then they can change things. Uh, and that is the way it was before. I'm gonna discard these, uh, which hasn't really changed too much. You can also click the plus button. The little red plus button will give you the same place uh, but you have to choose the date. It doesn't automatically pick the date that you may want for that. Looking at pre-created events, again, uh, if you click on an event itself, looking at, say, this Dishbook Twitter chat, um, here, you once you click it, this looks exactly the same as the mobile device. So in order to edit or change things, you have to edit that event uh, by clicking on the pencil. Now, uh, here in our district, we sign up for computer labs at the high school by having one shared Google Calendar. So when I turn that calendar on, now I have to double click. I cannot click on it once and change and add my name here. This is specifically to our um, district. But if you double click, again, it brings you right to, and I can add my name here to the list. Okay, and then when I hit save, again, it's gonna ask me, do I wanna change this event, this and following events, all events, default is to this event, and that's it and hit OK. So again, that's specific to our district. Uh, when you're changing uh, your calendars, again, you can turn them on or off. There's my St. Louis Blues. By doing the same way you did before, simply check or uncheck. And it's a little less confusing now because when you put your cursor over it, they stay unchecked. And before, that color would pop up. So that threw people off sometimes. Uh, and again, to change the color of the calendar, go over here to the right to the three dots. You can, again, display just this calendar. You can hide it simply here, which is really a handy thing before it, it took quite a bit to hide calendars. And then you have settings, which we'll get into in a second. But I'm gonna change this color because this is not a St. Louis Blues color and that blue is much, uh, much more bluesy. So again, those are pretty standard the way they were before. 
Getting into the settings now, this is where things have really changed. Uh, before, to change each calendar settings, you had to click on the little dots and then go into settings. And then once you were in that settings, you could only adjust the settings for that particular calendar. Now, however, you can get to all of these calendars and change the settings from one location, which is a, a dramatic improvement from the way it was before. Before we get to the general, or before we get to the specific calendar settings, let's take a look at the general settings. And again, this is all in one place. If you remember the old calendar, there was like five different settings, locations for everything, and it was really kind of confusing. But now uh, we can kind of scroll through and look at the general settings this way. Uh, again, the default duration, you can set these to be 30 minute events, 15, 15 minute events, however you want to do it. Um, you can, again, set up the way uh, guests can invite others, automatically invite or add invitations. Um, showing the weekends, those are pretty standard. This is the custom view that I really liked before too, um, or that's kind of new. I, I really like looking at it in two weeks at a time. Some people like one week, some people like a day. You can set your own custom view and then whatever you had it on last will be where it starts off the next time. So that again is pretty handy. Uh, adding alternate calendars. Again, you want them to add from, uh, from Gmail. Scheduling, you now have the option uh, to schedule and tell people when they are inviting you to do something outside of your working hours. And so if you, you know, turn off Saturday and Sunday, people will get a notification if they try to schedule you a time with you uh, during those hours off and you say, hey, I don't work on weekends. Uh, again, that's something new. And also uh, the mobile setup, again, you can connect to your phone, though you don't necessarily need it, um, but you can connect that way. If you have the app on your phone, it works just the same. They'll, they'll still work that way. Um, so again, those are the general settings. They're pretty standard and you can go to those exact same things I just scrolled through here on the left. All it does by clicking on the buttons is take you to that location. So now, uh, and again, importing and exporting is very similar. Uh, you can import a calendar uh, is simply by importing an iCal or CSV file if you're getting it from someplace else. You can also uh, you choose to export them that exact same way. Um, adding a calendar, if you want to, uh, again, from URLs, you can share calendars with people. Again, if it's iCal formats, people are sending you um, other calendars, you can import them straight into Google Calendar and they will automatically update if they're sent the right way. So that's not new. That was the way that was before, but it's in a different location. So I wanted to point that out to you. So looking at settings now, if you choose on a particular calendar, now you have the same settings that you had before, name, description, time zone. It just looks so much cleaner and easy to use. You can, again, make it public. Um, you can tell people to see only free or busy. And that is where the public button is, which again is really important, making sure that people can see your calendar if you have it on a website. Uh, again, here are the people who can see your events and details. You set your default notifications. I want them to be 20 minutes. That's the way I like it. Uh, all day notifications come the day before at 11.50 p.m., which I usually am still awake. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, general notifications. Now you can say when people are um, sending you events or things like that, are you going to get notified for that? Uh, and what notifications you want. And here are all the URLs, embed codes, iCals, and then uh, the secret address in iCal, which again uh, is secret without making it public. And then at the very, very bottom, you can remove the calendar and delete it that way. Um, looking at calendars that you don't own, like guest calendars, things that other people shared with you, uh, sort of the same type of settings. When you click on those, you can see the time zone, uh, and then that's about it. So when things are shared with you, you can't really change much with, much with them. What I love about this new one, and you can see it right here, is these little crossed out eyeballs. Before, it took forever to get in and try to hide or unsubscribe from calendars. Now, looking at them this way, you just simply turn off the visibility. I don't want to see any of these because there's nothing new happening in these events right now. So I turn them off when I go back to my settings. Those calendars have disappeared. Okay, so again, that's really, really a handy tool. So that's running through Google Calendar in a nutshell. Uh, I've pretty much hit most of the things that you're going to see in this new version, but that is, uh, that's a look at what we've got coming down the pike with Google Calendar. So take a look at it, enjoy it, love it as much as I do, uh, and, uh, and we're going to keep helping you tame that tech.